My name is Yu Zhang. My team member includes Matt Petrick and Ryan Yao. And then our presentation is on the development of European economic integration. four questions that you should be able to answer after this presentation. The first question is, what is the difference between widening and deepening? The second question is, what are the five levels of economic integration? The third question is, who were the original six? And the fourth question is, which treaty created the European Union? Reason for economic integration in the first place. As we all know, Europe in the early 20th century was a place of war and destruction. To After World War II, European leaders devised a plan to connect economies in order to prevent future conflict. This would increase flow of trade between European nations and make the cost of war too high, therefore eliminating future conflict. There are two methods of integration. Widening is the development of integration by expanding membership. So if these are your two original territories, then widening would involve adding an additional country to this. Deepening is the other method of integration, and it involves increasing integration by developing stronger connections between existing members. So if these are your original connections, then deepening just involves creating more and more connections between them. Now that we know there is economic integration going on, what are some of the different levels of it? First, we have a, what is called the free trade area. Free trade area means there's free trade among member countries, and there's no tariffs and non-tariff trade barriers between them. <laughs> Next, we have a custom union. Within a custom union, is everything of free trade areas plus common external tariffs. If you go a little bit deeper, we will have a common market. A common market is everything a custom union is plus factor mobility which means labor can move freely among countries. After a common market, we will have what is called a monetary union. Within the monetary union, there is common currency. And the deepest level of integration is what we call the uh, economic union. Within the economic union, not only do we have to have the, all the factors from before, we also have to add in harmonizations of all economic policies. The initial form of integration was the European Coal and Steel Community. It was developed around 1951 between six countries, France, West Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and Italy. It connects the coal and steel sectors across international borders. This allowed firms to move between nations more freely and allowed nations to specialize their production. The first formal treaty signed between the original six was the Treaty of Rome. It established a continuous process of integration introduced in 1957. 
This process created a free trade area that was named the European Economic Community around the original six countries. France, Italy, Germany, which is abbreviated here as DE for Deutschland, Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Further integration of the EEC occurred in 1968. It created a customs union and removed trade barriers between countries. Additionally, it established an external tariff and limited the control of the domestic market of the nations involved. The European Economic Community changed its name to the European Community during the year of 1969 and it added Denmark, Ireland, and UK to its member country. All previous cases that we talked about so far is an example of deepening, and this is the first example of widening within the European community. In 1979, the European Monetary System and Exchange Rate System was established to link exchange rate and currencies. It tied the economies of the members together, and it also created a band for allowed fluctuations of currencies. Next, the U European community experienced a second wave of widening. This started with the addition of Greece in 1981. The addition of Spain and Portugal. In 1986. Another important treaty was the Single European Act, which created a common market in 1987. It was the first major revision to the Treaty of Rome. It established the four freedoms which allowed for the free movement of labor, here civilized by people, capital, here symbolized by a computer with a dollar sign for the money that capital could be as well. Goods shown by a box from Amazon, which we are all too familiar with receiving. And services shown by tours or a sign for HR. The SEA also eliminated fiscal, technical, and physical barriers between the nations. It harmonized standards and increased efficiency of the entire group European community. The Treaty of Maastricht, signed in 1992, advanced the integration toward a monetary union. The EC changed its name to the EU, or the European Union. The treaty created a single currency, the euro, within the EU, and it centralized monetary and fiscal policy. It established conversions criteria, which are requirements for each nation to follow in order to be admitted into the EU. These requirements were created to ease the transition into the monetary union and to strengthen the union. These requirements were not strictly followed, as most nations were able to join without following them. And then all countries except for the UK, Denmark and Greece joined and um, implemented the Euro.
The third way of widening begins with the addition of Austria. And Sweden and Finland in the year of 1995. Within this third wave of widening came the addition of 10 countries in 2004. These included the Czech Republic, Estonia, Cyprus. Latvia, Lithuania, Hungary, Malta, Poland, Slovenia, and Slovakia. The third wave of widening continued in 2007 with the addition of Bulgaria, and Romania. Now we will revisit the four questions from the beginning of the lecture. First. What is the differences between whiten and deepen? Two, what are the five levels of economic integration? Three, who were the original six? Four, who which treaty created the European Union? One interesting piece of information we learned during this presentation was that the Greek country code was EL. The Spartans are from Greece, and now they reside in another EL, East Lansing. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed our presentation.